Hello, this is the fourth GL tutorial and today we will look at how to convert between raster and vector data using GDAL and the command line. We will work with two functions today. First of all, GDAL rasterize to convert a vector file to a raster data set and then GDAL polygonize to convert a raster file into a polygon. For today, I've prepared this friendly face shape file storing three polygons and let's first use GDAL to convert this vector data set to a raster layer. For that, we of course need our command line and let's navigate to our working directory. If we look at the documentation for the GDAL rasterize function, the things we do need to provide are of course a vector layer as a data source and a destination file name for the raster we are going to create. Then we will also need a burn value, which is a fixed value, so you can take any number and all cells within our output raster file that intersect with the provided polygons will take that value. And then finally, we will either need to provide a target resolution of our output raster or a target size in pixels. So let's do that for our face shape file. Now we are going from a vector file to a raster file, so of course we need GDAL rasterize. And then I said in order to create a new dataset, we either need to provide a target resolution or a target size in pixels. So let's just define the target size to be 100 times 100 pixels. Then let's set our no data value to minus 9999. And we need a burn value for our raster pixels that are within a polygon. So let's just set that to 1. And our input will be our face shapefile. And let's call the output face.tiff and check the result. Here's the face.tiff file and you can see it's just the raster version of our face shape file right here. So pixels with the value 1 anywhere where we have a polygon and no data where we have not. One thing I really don't understand is why QJS is switching up the values for black and white pixels right here. But don't worry, we have gotten just the result that we wanted to get because you can see if I hit identify features and click any of the dark pixels right here, we have the value 1 and outside of that we have the value no data. Okay, let's look at some other cool things that we can do with GDAL rasterize. Maybe we don't want to burn values anywhere where we have a polygon, but where we have not. For that, we would just use the option I for invert. So GDAL rasterize. Let's choose a different target resolution to make that less coarse. And now invert our selection. Input is still our face sheet file. And let's call the output face inverted. And now we have values of 1 anywhere where we don't have a polygon and no data values in here. You can see the raster extent is limited to the extent of our input shapefile. If we want to extend that a bit more, we can indicate that using the option TE. And now set the target extent by providing xmin, ymin, xmax and ymax using the coordinate system of your input shapefile. For me that is UTM and I've already picked the corner coordinates that I want to use, so I'm just going to paste them here. Again, we want an inverted face and let's provide an input and an output and run it. And if we now load our created raster file into QJS, we can see this was our raster before and now it's much larger. Okay, what else can we do with GDAL rasterize? If we take a look at the attribute table of this face shape file, you can see I have created a field called value and all the three polygons within our shape file store a different value. Now let's try to not only burn a single value to a raster file for all polygons that we have, but use different values for every polygon by accessing the attribute table of our shape file. If we want to do that, we again use GDAL rasterize, provide a target size, and a no data value. And now instead of using burn, we use the option A. And if we check the documentation, here we need to provide an attribute field name that stores the values that we're going to use as a burn value. So for us, that is value. And again, input and output. Let's just quickly change the color scale so we can better assess our result. Now you can see we've rasterized our face shapefile, but for every polygon within that shapefile, 
We have assigned a different raster value based on our attribute field called value. We can also use attribute fields to make a selection and only convert certain polygons within our shapefile that fulfill a condition to a raster. In our example, we can see the mouth has been assigned the value 1 and the two eyes are 2 and 3. So if we would only want to export those two circles, we can use our attribute field value to only select polygons that have a value greater or equal to 2. Let's see how that would look in a GDAL command. So if we would do the same thing as before, but not convert the entire shapefile to a raster, only the eyes, we would first of all change the output name to eyes, and then we add the option where, and then we need to provide an expression. And in our case, we want all polygons that have a value that is greater one. Let's see what we get. Now we have only exported the eyes of our face shapefile to a raster, as you can see here. Cool. The final thing concerning GDAL rasterize that I want to show you is how to create a multi-band raster from a multi-polygon shapefile. So let's aim to place every polygon within our shapefile in a different band of a multi-band RGB image. To do that with GDAL rasterize, we first need to create an empty multi-band raster that serves as a background, and then we will consecutively add each polygon to a different band. To create a background layer, we will use this circle shapefile and convert that to a multi-band raster. And now to initialize our three empty bands, we will use the burn option and then provide not one, but three values and set them all to zero. And then for every burn value, GDAL will create a new band. Input is the circle shapefile and let's call the output circle.tiff. This is our rasterized circle. And if we look at that with GDAL info, we can see our raster file circle.tiff has three bands in which we will now put different parts of our face shapefile. Okay, let's start with the first polygon. Really important is that we do not provide any target resolution or target size because that will cause GDAL to create a new dataset. We don't want that, we want to add to our circle.tiff raster file. Okay, so we skip all those options and add data to the first band, which we will indicate with the option B and one for first band. Then in that first band, we will burn the value one and we will burn that everywhere where the value field within our face shapefile is equal to one. Now the input this time is not the circle, but the face shapefile and the raster file where we want to add this information to is circle. Dot tiff. And if we check out our circle file again, you can now see we have added raster values in the first band, which is the red band, right where the mouth of our face shape file is. So let's just add the two eyes to the second and third band, just as we did before. Now this is the output that we get, a raster file with three different bands, and in every band we have the value 1, where we have a different polygon from our face shapefile. But what if we want to take our raster data and convert that back to a polygon? For that we can use the command gdal polygonize, and there is really not too much to put in there, most importantly input raster file and output vector file. So let's try that for the first raster that we have created called face.tiff, and we would call gdal polygonize.py and now the input is face.tiff and we already have a shapefile called face so let's call that new face.shape. Here is the input raster and here is the shapefile that we've gotten from that. If we not only want to convert all valid pixels to a polygon but also include no data values we can use the option no mask to include those areas as well. And now we have converted the entire raster to a vector layer. If you convert a raster file with pixels that have different values, all pixels of the same value will be grouped and that value will also appear in the attribute table. So let's look at what happens when we convert the raster that we have created using the attribute field value.
We now get this shapefile and in its attribute table, we find different values for each polygon. Now this field by default gets the name dn. We can change that as well. by providing two more inputs. First, the layer name, let's call that face, and we need that because GW will identify the first name here as the name of the layer. And if we want to change the attribute field name, we put that behind that, so let's call that value. And now the field within our newly created shapefile is not called DN anymore, but value. Okay, final thing, if we have a multiband image, we can of course only select certain bands to convert those to a vector file. So let's use the multiband circle.tiff file and only extract the first band, which is the mouse, to a shapefile. So GL polygonize, circle.tiff is the input. We want the first band and call that mouth.shape. And that's how you only convert certain bands to a shapefile. Now this is as much as I wanted to tell you about rasterizing and polygonizing. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe if you don't want to miss new GDAL tutorials. For the next one, I'm planning to only work with vector data and explore the open feature library OGR. Until then, leave your questions in the comments and have fun converting your own rasters into polygons and vice versa.